Okay, Leo. Follow you, follow me, or she's gone. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with Follow Me and Follow You because it's one of my favorite songs of all time. But wow, you really made that. Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, and She's Gone also depends if it's a long version or the short version. Well, of course, the long version. The long version, because yeah. then it's that She's Gone. Yeah. And it goes over and over and over. And the short version, they just do it once and they started to fade it out. I guess because they thought, oh, it's too long of a song. Let's fade it out. But Follow Me, Follow You. I am instantly back in like 1970. Follow seven? you, follow me. Follow you, follow me. Yes. What do I say? Follow me, follow you? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. It's, it's always about me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's get started. Uh, welcome everyone to uh, Lunchbox Sociables, uh, Season Two, Episode One, where we discuss everything uh, music, uh, musicians, uh, music business, uh, blah, 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 uh, <laughs> blah 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 blah. You got to give people a little more than that, Leo. Otherwise, why would they well, bother tuning in? We go off topic so much, and I know we. But that's we, the fun we, of it. We uh, wanted to call the, the the podcast so since we, so often we start each sentence off with so Leslie a so Leo yeah. but uh, yeah so uh, so it's all uh, it's music related stuff but uh, other fun banter uh, so you were busy with fun stuff over the summer but uh, what about music <laughs> what about and... music because music's not because <laughs> music's not any fun <laughs> <laughs> well it's a bit more work it's a lot more work it's especially more... these podcasts so much work yeah. um, so what did you do musically over the summer lots of uh, lots of recording there's a bunch of productions uh, in various stages there's from like beginning stages to almost completion uh, one song got done completely uh, and the video 15 diamonds and that got out in uh August. I was uh, pretty pleased with that. And uh, available I'll, on YouTube. Click it's, the it's, link below. It's, it's out there completely. <laughs> um, uh, a second song, uh, One Man Calling. A lot of the work got done in the summertime, and it's. Uh, I'm sure at the t- it's going to be released this week. So by the time this airs, it'll already be out. Uh, just a lot of uh, lots of productions. A couple of podcasts got done. Um, uh, they're, they're, I kept pretty busy music-wise uh, mm-hmm. over the summer. So any other thoughts about season two? Uh, well, season one was so much fun. I'm hoping that uh, uh, season two can be uh, as fun. It, it, it's Like I said, it was a lot of work, but it's been a lot of fun. It's uh, just a banter about things and discuss stuff. Uh, it, it, was act- it was more work than I thought. And it was more fun than I thought. Okay. So uh, th- that's good. Even so, though working with you is, <laughs> it's still, it's still, has its own challenges. Yeah, working with you has its challenges, um, but uh, still lots of fun. So for season two, I got lots of ideas of things that I want to talk about. I definitely want to get into the video production. Uh, I know that's been, uh, I've been keep promising that, and but it's going to have to be over a couple episodes because I want to do one episode just on like the pre stuff, all the stuff that goes into setting up a video production and then another episode on the software and actually uh, editing uh, uh, a music video. On the the upside of that it's taken so long to get to, I think I'm going to use the the last song, the One Man Calling video, as a, as a good example of what it, what it takes to, uh, to do a music video because there's so much that went into that. And when you see the uh, the video as it's laying out there on the in the in the software with all the layers, there's 15 layers. The most layers I've ever done on a, on a video has been seven. I know that won't mean anything to anybody, but when I when I we do the video, you'll say, "Oh, that's what he means by all the uh, all the layers." So it was it was uh, it was quite the production. So do we want to talk about that new song release? I feel like I'm I feel like I'm on a someone's talk show and I'm flogging uh, flogging some new uh, new product. So we can just pretend that this is my show. And oh, you're here to just yeah. flog whatever yeah. latest song yeah. you've got. But do you want to be sitting here with the good mic yeah. and I'll sit over there with the crappy mic? <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> Did any 
but see me here today No one saw me twice cause I'm far away Running all the time, I'm out of breath No trouble staying alive cause I'm scared to death funny about this video is we had something else completely uh, another idea for the production because uh, I built this big huge 80 foot circular backdrop out of two by fours and electrical PVC and um, I don't want to give away too much for the because I want <laughs> but anyway but the whole idea was we we're going to rotate the camera on around on a little lazy Susan and it worked fine in our test production but on the day of live it just it didn't work as as promised it was like the the shark in uh, in jaws uh, it didn't work as good but uh, because there was so much other video taken all the other video stuff worked out really good and possibly saved it because um, the, the all the, the band members were really loose when it came to all the other stuff because they thought that was going to be the filler that ended up being the main stuff and the, the rotating uh, uh, film work didn't ever never made it to the final cut so what was it like getting the old band back together how long has it been since the four of you played? Like you and Rob play together regularly, yes. but the um, other two. Uh, we, last time we played was probably two thousand and nine. It was a, it was quite uh, quite s some time. So it was uh, you know we had done that. Uh, we this song got reworked from this this. Uh, hold on. So way back in oh nineteen ninety. Two, I want to say. Uh, when I was with a band called uh, The Resistance, or it was my band, The Resistance, and we had a song called uh, Stick to Your Guns. And so that was back when we were recording and putting out uh, cassette tapes. And, uh, so like you'd play a live gig and you'd sell your cassette tapes to yeah, people at, yeah, at the gig? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, How much? Uh, like five uh, bucks a I think it was, I think, I think it was five bucks. Yeah. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure... Uh, yeah, it was uh, James uh, Connor was the uh, was the singer. I wasn't the singer of the Resistance. I was just the guitar, just the lowly guitar player, right. and off to the side. You know, but uh, I was stick to your guns. And then uh, when uh, uh, Lunchbox Social got formed, we re end up redoing the song. And oh, hold on. <laughs> and then, I guess I should have all. You be a bit more prepared with your props, Leo. <laughs> I didn't know. Didn't know you're going to ask the question. Mm -hmm. So, so in 2000 or 2003 or 2000, 2002, one, uh, we uh, reworked the song, and now it's called uh, "One Man Calling," and put it out on the uh, on the the red CD, the Relentless, Relentless Pursuit of the Hard Life CD, and. Uh, uh, and then just last summer, sold that for ten bucks. At yeah, yeah, okay. that's right. And then uh, over the pandemic, I pulled out the song, and I found that I was always, um, I was always. See this, I got ready. Oh, it might be out of tune though, but. Uh, so I was al always using that as my warm up. For like when I was going to be uh, when I was going to be playing something, I'd always use that as the warm. I go, I really like that riff. That's from my own one of my own songs. Uh, why don't I rework that song? And so I end up reworking it, and uh, uh, it just it took on a life of its own. Like it just if we there were seven versions that just went on and on and on trying to 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 get to where we want. And then uh, during the summer, I said, you know what? Uh, why don't I see if I can pull in the uh, the the, the, old, the old the old guys, the fellows from uh, from the original Lunchbox Social, and I reached out, and they were all on board. Uh, Rolf recorded the drums in his studio. Uh, Darko uh, recorded in my studio. Rob did their recording, and then all the vocals got layered on. It was uh, it was quite the undertaking. It was a big production. It was uh, it took a lot of mixes, uh, a couple of masters, but uh, I'm very happy with it at the end. And funny story, so 
uh, there's a, a fellow that had uh, uh, that has done some other recording with me. Uh, said, "Oh, I'm not too crazy about that chorus for the song." So I went and wrote a new chorus, and uh, and that's where I come up with the uh, la 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 la. I liked it so much that I go, you know what? I gotta keep these lalas. I gotta keep these lalas in the, into the song, and then I go, well, even it's th- good enough for the Beatles. I guess it's <laughs> yeah, good enough for you, right? Yeah. And then I like the lala so much. I go, you know what? I'm gonna start the song with the lalas. <laughs> and so I like, I could I just get away with three and a half minutes of just lalas? <laughs> just, <laughs> So when you talk about releasing music, um, like what we would hear on Spotify or Apple or whatever, how does that actually happen? Like, how does your music get on those platforms? Well, when you are a uh, unsigned artist, uh, you don't get to work directly with a distributor. So you have to go through what's called uh, an, uh, an aggregator, or what I call them aggravators, um, because it can be really difficult to work with because there's just this app and you have to upload and everything has to be stringent to the app's requirements. And, oh, no, that wasn't, that was too, this was too, and, just, and then it just, you know, crashes. And you have to, okay, we have to upload it again. And so it can be pretty difficult. I think it's probably easier to record a 48-track orchestral movement than to upload and work through some of these uh, aggregators to get the music out but that's that's how you do it that's you know that's what most people are doing anyone who's not an unsigned uh, uh, unsigned so essentially you're setting up an account on Apple Music no, and... you don't even get to work with Apple. You're working with a company that, oh, that will work f- okay. with Apple on your behalf. Okay. Yeah, Apple's right. not going to talk to me. Okay. But this, uh, I, I work with the ag- aggravator. <laughs> I don't even know how to call the name now. I work with the aggravator, yeah. and the aggravator works Does with... Does the aggravator uh, have a name? Uh, I've said mean things here, so I don't oh. think I want to say <laughs> the name of my aggravator. So there are multiple aggravators. There are multiple aggravators. Okay. Uh, if anyone wants, uh, wants to reach out to me directly... To say, okay, who who would you recommend? Which one who, is the least aggravating <laughs> yeah, of the aggravators? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So when you submit your music to the aggravator, hmm. um, do you have to select a genre? Like, how does that work? Yes. Yeah, so, because uh, you want your music to be fed into certain spots, um, you, you it, it, there's it, it can be very um, stringent as to where you can where you can put. Like most of our music goes under rock, but sometimes we've done some things under. Uh, uh, not folk, but uh, country, uh, country, and there, there's another alternative. alternative. But there's, there's about 15 different pops. There's a J pop, a G pop, a C pop, a K pop, a soda pop. There's <laughs> all sorts of different uh, pops. There's Christian rock. There's German rock, German hardcore, German all sorts of things. There's lots of country specific, nationality specific, and then there was the, right at the very bottom. Rock, and not even a, not even a rock and roll, but just rock right at the very uh, right at the very bottom. So that's uh, that's where uh, most of uh, Lunchbox Social goes to. Yeah, is that how you would classify your music as just rock? I, I always say rock and roll. Yeah. So uh, I think it's that's rock, but it's got a bit of a country yeah, so, kind of sound to it. Yeah, too. It, it's it, uh, by reason of elimination. Right. I, I always come back to well, it's kind of rock and roll. Yeah. You know, it's only rock and roll. It's only rock and roll. But I like it. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, there's an idea. (laughs) We've just passed the anniversary of John Lennon's death. I know John Lennon was very impactful to you, the Beatles and John Lennon in particular. Um, What memories do you have of, of that? I mean, I have my memories. I know exactly where I was and when I heard it and all of that. What about you? Yeah. So, uh, geez, Les, um, Life was really hard at that time. That's uh, the fall of uh, 1980, and uh, life was pretty tough for me at that point. I had uh, taken it upon myself to quit high school, and was just uh, uh, working on the uh, the farm. And I was working out in the bush, cutting out uh, t- timber, and um, and I had discovered uh, I had discovered uh, I discovered the the Beatles one uh, one fall evening, and uh, by an old forty five. Oh, hold on! <laughs> hold on. <laughs> just just pause. Okay, Leo, you really, really need to have your props ready. <laughs> I didn't know you were going. You see, I don't always know what you're going to be talking about. Um, yeah, so I uh, I came across this forty five 
of All My Loving. And I played it over and over and over and over and over. Where did it come from? Who um, was it? It was, it was just, uh, it was in our family. It was, I guess, one of my mothers. It was just in this collection of 45s. And I was just laying on the floor one night and I came across it and I put it, you know, I put it on and I go, what is this music? What is this golden nectar to my oh. ears? And I literally played this poor little 45, one song. And how old would you have been at that time? Oh, uh, 18. I don't so know. you didn't even grow up listening to the Beatles. No, no. Like, I remember Beatles music from when I was a kid. No, I, I knew of some songs. I, okay. I shouldn't say I didn't. Okay, I didn't was it under a rock? <laughs> so I knew some songs, but I didn't know this song. Uh, and uh, I, up to then, I was probably more a fan of like the Monkees. <laughs> 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 they were a they were now that's a band. <laughs> 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 and um, yeah, so. Uh, and this, uh, the song sort of changed the direction of my life because I go, oh my God, I love this music. And uh, I know as soon as I hear the song, it's fall time, it's November of, uh, of 1980, and I can still see like the snow coming down and, uh, and eating chocolate chip cookies and looking out the front window and uh, hearing the, playing the song over and over and over. And then all of a sudden I wake up one morning and... Uh, I hear uh, John Lennon had uh, had had been shot, and uh, that that was I was really I was devastated. It was really it was really tough for me. That'd probably be the uh, you know in in my life that up to that point that would be the most devastating passing of somebody for yeah. uh, for me because so you I'd, didn't hear about it till the morning after. No, yeah, no, same. Yeah. I heard it the morning after, yeah. which happened to be my birthday. <laughs> right. Oh, that's right. You it heard was on my on seventeenth yeah. birthday. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I know they announced it during like the Monday night football. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, yeah, that was. Uh, that was uh, that was a uh, that was that was tough for me, yeah. but it re it it made me want to uh, uh, get into music, and you know, ever since I've always just been going off in that direction. Mm -hmm. So, speaking of props, uh, what have you got over there to your left? Oh, uh, this is my uh, <laughs> two thousand nine Goofy. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's my. It's, hey, it's my 2009 Goofy uh, Disney Goofy. Okay. Did, did a marathon on the Saturday? No. The half. half no. Marathon what do we do? On Saturday? No, half, right? Yeah. The half marathon on the Saturday and then the marathon the very next day, the Sunday. So and what did I do on the half marathon day? I tried out a new pair of shoes I got at the expo. <laughs> I did the half of them, and I got this big blister, and there I was, uh, Dave still teasing me about being up at 3 o'clock in the morning, trying on all my shoes to get a, another pair of shoes for the, uh, uh, but this, um, yeah, um, my, uh, my, astronaut lunchbox. my astronaut lunchbox, um, uh, it's like, it's for the, uh, you know, zoom in, zoom in, can you zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, can you zoom in, yeah, zoom in, eh, hey, zooming, yeah, so this won't be any good on the audio, <laughs> audio podcast. But uh, yeah, as my uh, uh, the, uh, Apollo Eleven uh, uh, lunchbox from 1969. Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure. I got this, and I was in grade two or three, so it was well after. <laughs> by the by, the time they they made these uh, up for you know made their way into Canada. Uh, oh, something's inside it. <laughs> and it's metal. What's in there? It's A sandwich from 1972. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's be, you know, oh. Yo yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what are you excited about? What are you looking forward to? Uh, well, I'm I'm kind of I'm <laughs> I'm getting into Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel yeah, my pelvic what do they call it? my pelvic uh, floor? Pel my pelvic floor. Yeah. Understanding my pelvic floor and yeah. And look at that. I'm already I'm even sitting on so I'm not sitting on a chair anymore. I'm sitting on this stool and trying to, you know, <laughs> so I'm, all ex I'm excited about spinal <laughs> spine spinal health. <laughs> spinal health. Yeah. That's my new excitement. Uh, I am excited about a couple of songs that are in production. I'm not going to tell you which ones because they don't turn out as good as I hope, but there are a couple of songs I'm really really uh, excited about. <laughs> <laughs> you just missed the biggest yawn. <laughs> you missed her moment of like a, like a boa constrictor about it, like this. 
Uh, am I putting you to sleep, honey? No, we're coming to the end of the episode. Though, so how... Yes, this is the. Uh, we are coming to the end. Um, I don't think. I don't think I introduced my sidekick, Leslie. Did, do I did, need an introduction still? Oh, uh, okay, maybe not. Uh, so, uh, oh, we're going back to the so. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, joining us for episode one of season two. We will be back uh, with another episode of more fun stuff uh, talking about music. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Uh, we will uh, we have some more things for. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> so it's um, it's been a. Um, uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs>